This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. The IT choices that we need to uh, be making, uh, again, I'll look at this very briefly, really. There is the uh, configuration, uh, which is really looking at a type of network. So we can have local area networks. So local area network typically found in an organization like a company or university or hospital. Uh, a local area network will put a special cable around the buildings in the organization and this uh, allows information to be passed from one person to another, allows information to be shared and, and, and so on. And then you have what's called a wide area network. Uh, this is where, uh, let's take two towns to cities, uh, you have a branch in New York, you have a branch in San Francisco. You're not going to lay your own cable between New York and San Francisco, so in here you basically use a telephone system. But what you would have in San Francisco is you have your little, you have your little network there, New York, you have a little local area network there, and they are joined up, if you like, uh, over the uh, communication system, over the, the telephone system. And then you can have what's called an extranet. Uh, this is where your IT system is given access to somebody else's IT system. You go outside, that's what the extra is. You go outside your network to somebody else's. This, uh, for example, a great use of it. Uh, very early on in, in automation, uh, Supermarkets, uh, if, if, if inventory got down to a particular level, supermarkets would automatically send an order to a supplier. So go down to your reorder level, we'll send an order out. Now that, that's quite good. However, these orders would arrive with the suppliers at kind of slightly random intervals, kind of surprising the supplier. Oh, you know, Sainsbury's or whatever it is, they, they, they want these goods dispatched quickly. Uh, and that, there's an element of extra net in there. However, what supermarkets now do is they say to the supplier, we will give you access to our inventory. And when you see our inventory has fallen down in a particular store to a particular level, you take the decision to send us the goods. So this uh, type of processing, making very clever use of you like digital technology, uh, allows the supplier to anticipate when goods have to be delivered and you take out a lag, you take out a time lag from that and it means the, the management of goods is much more efficient. Uh, should we wire up our uh, network or should it be done through Wi-Fi? And again, we, we've all visited places where we can essentially latch into a, a, a a network through Wi-Fi. If Wi-Fi isn't there, you have the phone technology, 3G, 4G and 5G, giving you really quite fast access uh, to information. You know, it's not ideal for downloading um, movies, uh, but it's pretty good if you have to download a few emails. Local or cloud. Uh, what a, a local does means is that you hold the information basically on the machine sitting in front of you. Or, or in what's called a, a server, as maybe sitting somewhere else in the office. Every machine in the office would have its own version of Word, its own version of Excel, its own version of the accounting system, and so on. Every machine in the office has to be fairly powerful, has to be capable of running the Excel spreadsheets, uh, which can be quite complicated, has to be capable of running the perhaps very complex accounting system. What happens in the cloud is you have the machines, and these can be relatively simple machines, called sometimes called lean machines. Uh, and then you have, and I'll demonstrate it by you know, what I'll call uh, really a, a, a cloud, you have somewhere remote here, a cloud, I mean, it's not a cloud, it's another machine. Okay, and these machines connect to it. 
But what you have in here is, let's say we're dealing with Excel. You have one copy of Excel, which is there. And basically, what these machines are doing, if each of these operators wants to do a spreadsheet, uh, they will they will see the Excel spreadsheet on their machine, but the actual processing is being done here. Uh, it's particularly useful this if you've got very um, demanding applications like uh, computer aided design. So computer aided design takes an awful lot of processing, and to to have machines all capable of doing that is very very expensive. But what you have up here is one machine capable of doing the processing. And, and it's unusual for all of these machines to have to do this powerful processing at the same time. So basically, the, the processing and the holding of data is done remotely, which allows all of your machines to be much simpler machines, much less expensive machines. It also means that if Excel updates to another version, it only has to happen once up here. One of the big problems in, in, in conventional IT systems is if the Excel version changes, you have to get everybody to run the upgrade. And you end up with people that, you know, uh, with old versions of the, the software, which apart from not being compatible, can often uh, raise security problems if some of the upgrades are there to, to you know, prevent uh, security breaches. Centralized or decentralized, if, if something is decentralized, it spreads the risk, if you like, but, but also spreads the data and maybe where it could be hacked and so on. If something is centralized, maybe all your eggs are in a basket, and that machine goes that, that nobody can work uh, at all. So quite a few IT uh, sections, uh, IT decisions to be made. We've talked about this uh, a little bit. Uh, internet and World Wide Web, we're pretty familiar with that. Uh, an intranet uh, is uh, an internal internet. Uh, this is where when you're, for example, looking at the, let's say, the, the employee handbook for your organization rather than looking at a, a copy kind of on your machine, you're looking at it through a browser. So you're looking at the master copy of the employee handbook really through a browser on your machine. So an intranet, just think of it as an internal internet. Uh, it presents information in something like um, um, Internet Explorer, uh, or, or Google Chrome, something of that sort, but it's essentially internal information. An extranet we've talked about where one intranet has given access to another. Big data. Extremely large collections of data uh, can be analyzed to reveal patterns, trends, and associations, especially relating to human behaviors and interactions. It's characterized by the three Vs. First of all, there is a very high volume of data. So if you think of a, a large supermarket company like Walmart or Sainsbury's, it's keeping information about every purchase of every person uh, over the last five years. The information can be show great variety so you can have information like, you know, what did this person buy? When did they buy it? How much did they pay for it? Uh, but also what they're beginning to do uh, with facial recognition is they can follow you in the store. They can, you know, and, and soon will uh, be able to watch you going around the store. They'll see you pausing in front of, you know, frozen pizzas. Uh, and maybe you decide not to buy a frozen pizza. Uh, but they will know you were kind of interested in buying a frozen pizza. So maybe this is the time uh, that a little bit later they send you an email giving you a discount on frozen pizzas. Now the variety of information they're holding there is, is your almost geographical location in in the supermarket as you wander about, but also there, there is something which enables facial recognition uh, so that they can 
identify individual people. And velocity, the data is changing extremely rapidly. Uh, and, and we have to have IT systems which uh, can update themselves sufficiently quickly. So here we have it, variety, velocity, volume. Sometimes another one is added, which is called veracity. Uh, in other words, the truth. This data is going to be used, it's going to be trawled through, analysed, to look for trends, patterns, correlations, uh, and so on, insights into buying behaviour, insights into consumer preference. Uh, and we need to have some assurance that information is accurate, true, veracity. For example, if we were going to be using facial recognition, how good is it? What happens if somebody comes in wearing a pair of sunglasses? Or something, something like that, or you know, changes the colour of their hair or their hairstyle, will it send the system haywire? Data analytics is then what you do with the big data. Uh, so processing a big data uh, uh, to produce something worthwhile. So this data mining is a general name given to it. It's like mining for gold. There's an awful lot of rubbish in a gold mine, but every now and again you find a nugget of value. So similarly, people will be going through loads and loads and loads of information in the big data, and from time to time they will find some little pattern, some little correlation, uh, which allows them to increase profitability. There's predictive analytics, trying to predict what may maybe demand is going to be next week. Uh, or demand, uh, or what somebody's response is going to be if you knock 20% off a price. Text analytics, uh, your emails can be read. Voice analytics, your uh, mobile phone conversations can be uh, listened into and interpreted. Uh, statistical analytics, uh, you know, applying all sorts of sophisticated analytics, significance testing, trend analysis, and so on, uh, to try to understand what's happened in the past and to predict what's happening in the future. Something specifically mentioned in your, your uh, syllabus is something called extraction, transformation and loading. It, it relates uh, a bit to, to big data because big data probably collects data for a number of different sources from a number of different database systems. And what we have to do is, is, in a way, if you have all these sources of data here, and if, if information is held all over the place, it's not particularly useful, what we want to do is to kind of take out the data and in some way put it in a, a kind of master database, uh, kind of at the bottom here, where all the relevant data is actually going to be held. So extraction is taking the data from uh, different sources. Now that might sound easy, uh, but of course the different sources might hold the data differently. Uh, so one database might hold dates as uh, day day, month month, year year. An American one would probably hold it month month, day day, year year. Some will hold it, you know, month month, day day, year 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 year, uh, and so on. Uh, they will hold names differently. Some people will put in middle names, some people will put in middle name initials. Uh, uh, and so this data can, which in a way should be the same or, or very compatible, can come in a variety of shapes and forms. So, but we have to extract it from the original database. And then what we have to do is to format it into a unique uh, or, or uniform way so that all of this data becomes similar, uniformly held. And then loading it is putting it into the new database where you have all this cleaned up, verified, uniform data put in the new database where every date is held as day, day, month, month, year, year, and so on. Everybody's name has got the full four names and the family name and so on uh, there. Uh, all addresses have got a uh, you know, kind of uniform zip code, postal code, and, and so on, and it's fit for purpose. So that's 
extraction, transformation and loading. Business intelligence, just know what it means. It's the technology uh, here of collecting data, analyzing data, presenting information to help managers and all employees make informed decisions. It, it, it ties back to, to knowledge management. It implies that we, we have the directors and managers you know, really thinking about this information, really in their bra brains, really doing something useful with it. Dangers of big data, uh, huge amounts of data being held somewhere. Uh, there is the cost of the uh, uh, maintenance of these very powerful machines. There is regulation. Uh, you're holding a lot of personal data and many countries have got laws in place regulating what you can do with that and big fines in place if you don't hold it right. A lot of data being held in one place makes it vulnerable to being uh, uh, lost, stolen. Uh, credit cards escape, if you like. Medical records escape. Uh, and, and again, there can be adverse consequences to that. Incorrect data may be input or make it in there for some reason, and then we're going to base incorrect decisions on it. And it can be used for employee monitoring. I was reading just to this, this morning, actually, in a paper that Amazon uh, now uh, records in their warehouses records employees uh, efficiency if you like and rate of working and how much they work I suppose and and now we have uh, computers making decisions about which employees should lose their jobs because they're not working with the proper efficiency and that's a form of employee monitoring obviously uh, some companies give employees a, a kind of um, identification badge, but this identification badge allows employees to be tracked as they go around the building. You know, which employee talks to which employee, uh, and when they talked and so on. Uh, you know, how long they spent in, in the lavatories, or how long they spent in the canteen and, and, and so on. Uh, and one has to be careful that, you know, what what doesn't want employees being overly lazy, uh, but at the same point, same time you, you, you want to make work attractive to new employees uh, and not too oppressive. Many countries, as I said, have these uh, data protection uh, legislation. For example, in the UK, uh, through EU regulations, uh, people mustn't hold data they don't they mustn't hold more data than they need. They mustn't hold it for longer than they need. They must show data to the people that's been held about it if they want to see it. They must uh, change incorrect data uh, if it does turn out to be incorrect and so on. There, there, there is quite a lot of legislation in many countries now about how data should be held, how it should be safeguarded, and how the people about whom it's being held have got certain rights. Finally, we'll just look at, uh, just very quickly down a list, huge list here, uh, of the uh, ethical, social and security dangers that can be with data. Incorrect data, incorrect decisions, theft of information, unauthorized alteration of information, so putting your own pay rise through, uh, uh, maybe altering a, a rival's uh, uh, records so that you look better than them, uh, getting rid of uh, you know, bad debts and, uh, and, and so on. Fraudulent websites, phishing as they're called, looks like your bank but it's not your bank, uh, yet they then manage to steal all your, your, your passwords and so on. Time wasting by employees by going on FaceTime when they should be you know, analysing something. Downloading offensive material like pornographic material which may well be illegal and is certainly offensive. Violation of copyright laws, uh, where you buy one copy of Excel and you put it on loads of machines. Uh, strictly and seriously illegal. Denial of service attacks, uh, where uh, a website is basically attacked uh, by, often now by what are called bots, automatic robots, if you like, uh, and they get so many uh, people asking for information, 
it makes the website crash and denies proper service to people who are wanting to buy goods, book a plane, whatever is going on. Computer viruses uh, can obviously delete information. Physical dangers like floods, earthquakes, fire, terrorism attacks and the like. Innocent harm being done, just wrong information being put in quite innocently uh, and then some adverse consequences coming out from that. It is therefore essential that organisations know uh, or check that data is collected legally, input accurately, held safely, ensure that it can only be accessed by authorised people who have a legitimate requirement to access that information, ensure software is properly tested. Very important, uh, if you put in a software update which doesn't work, then your whole system can come down. And in the UK, a couple of banks on routine software updates, their banking system was out of action for one to two weeks. Nobody could see what money they had. Nobody could get money out of the ATM machines at all. Make sure that we back up data, use virus checkers, use firewalls to stop external people getting in and, and changing the data or stealing the data and so on. Uh, and very importantly, have uh, uh, standby arrangements so that if the worst does come to the worst, if there is a fire, a flood or something, you can switch over quickly to standby arrangements so that almost seamlessly you can carry on your business uh, without inconvenience or loss of, loss of trust amongst your stakeholders. So if all of these new techniques arising from information technology, we have to think, you know, what's their purpose? And the purpose is certainly not some enthusiast who likes information, information technology for its own sake. In a business where it is profit seeking, uh, then the aim of using information technology should be to increase long term profits. In a non profit seeking business or organization, even though the benefits, if you like, or the success is not necessarily measured by revenue, it's still important to manage costs correctly so that you can deliver the maximum benefits to uh, patients, pupils, whatever the non-profit organization happens to be, that you can deliver those benefits efficiently and economically. Now we can sum up really the purpose of information technology as uh, we really want to monetize data. In other words, make use of the data to generate increased profits or generate increased efficiencies. And the ways in which you can do that are listed here. And very quickly, uh, it would be perhaps starting with increasing efficiency. We know that if you automate certain transactions, uh, then maybe we don't have to keep paying wages to people. Uh, we can employ those people, some are more interesting, uh, rather than doing repetitive, routine, low-skilled, dull uh, type of transactions. Uh, their particular skills and uh, uh, know-how can be employed in a more beneficial and interesting way. Again, it, uh, the, the, the use of robots, for example, in, in manufacturing can greatly increase the efficiency with which products are made. Key performance indicators. Now, a key performance indicator is really a, a, a type, just a measure of uh, how we're doing in particularly important areas of the business. Uh, different businesses set their own KPIs. Uh, so it might be that sales volume is keeping up. It might be to something to do with gross profit percentage. It might be to do with how quickly you manage to get in amounts from your customers. Uh, in a hospital, a KPI might be to do with bed utilization. And KPIs are really only useful if they arrive quickly enough uh, that we can do something with them, which is actually going to be useful. There's no point in waiting 12 months and getting a KPI, which reveals you haven't been doing very well. And, and one of the great things about information technology is you can get KPIs very, very quickly indeed. You can get them daily. You know, what sales did we make yesterday? What gross profits did we make yesterday? How many units did we make yesterday? 
how many patients did we see yesterday? And with these uh, new uh, and faster KPIs, then we should be able to manage the business much better. Forecasting. Forecasting is essential to decision making. If you've no idea what the future is going to be, you can't possibly uh, make decisions about it. Forecasting is always going to be inaccurate to some degree because we don't know what the future is going to be. But by collecting lots of present data, uh, and perhaps seeing how seasonally the data goes up and down, then it's putting us in a much better position to make accurate forecasts for the future. An accurate forecast should mean uh, more accurate uh, predictions uh, about, say, what production we need to uh, plan to meet sales and, and, and targets and so on. More accurate market segmentation. Now, as part of marketing, uh, what you do is you, in general, don't look at your customers as a kind of uniform group of people. Uh, customers uh, break down into different sections or segments. So you'd have male, female, you'd have perhaps people under 20, 20 to 40, 40 and above, people living in different areas of the country, uh, people uh, at different stages of their lives, single, Marry, you know, a family with children, then kind of retired, uh, different affluence. And one of the secrets of marketing is identifying these different segments and making products which are just right for that particular segment. Better coordination. So if you think of just in time inventory, there has to be very good coordination uh, between receiving orders from a customer, uh, it kind of exploding out into the number of parts we need and then sending out orders to your suppliers, getting those orders coming in at the right time, making the product and delivering it, and, and, and the like. It is almost impossible to envisage a just-in-time inventory system uh, without high degrees of uh, computerization uh, and high utilization of computer technology. Adding new products and services. Well, if we just think of products, if you're adding a new product, you have to design it. To design a new product, you need to make drawings, and then you need to make those products uh, in, into, you know, your finished goods, essentially. Uh, and uh, what companies are finding is that they have to produce more and more new profits per year, uh, really to keep up with what the competition is doing. There's a, you know, a constant flow of new models coming out on all sorts of goods. Anything which will speed up and streamline the process of designing a product and getting it to production and getting it out to the distributors is going to greatly improve your profitability. For example, uh, Zara, the clothing business, it designs around 14 to 15,000 different products every year and it gives itself about six weeks uh, between, say, designing a product, getting it made, and getting it out to the shops throughout the world. And none of that could be done without uh, fantastic databases of information about manufacturers, about different cloth, uh, without fantastic use of computer-aided design, fantastic use of logistics uh, to get the products uh, out to the shops within a relatively short time. Uh, whilst uh, Zara believes they're still going to be fashionable and popular. New business models. Well, you just have to think of, uh, you know, MP3 downloads, the idea of iTunes. You need to think of things like uh, Amazon and eBooks off Netflix. Uh, all of these companies make huge use of information technology. And basically, the new business model rests on innovative use of information technology. Sharing data. A, a number of different organizations, uh, potentially rivals, but they may get into some sort of corporation, some sort of strategic alliance. Uh, and if they share the data on customers and customers' preferences, again, uh, you know, having data on 10,000 consumers is more reliable and more susceptible to uh, clever analysis than having just data on 2,000 customers. The more data you have, potentially, the more reliable your results. 
And finally, there is a possibility of actually selling data, selling hard data for hard cash. Now, we have to be very careful if you're selling personal data. Most uh, countries have all sorts of laws uh, protecting individual privacy. But of course, there's a vast amount of data which is not private. Uh, the example given in the notes is geodata or geographical data, where there are all sorts of satellite images uh, available. Uh, the satellite images can show the you know, topography of the ground, you know, the height and so on. It can do analysis of uh, the fertility of the ground, whether it's you know, short in ammonia, short in nitrogen and, and so on. There's all sorts of then geological data, what is actually on the, the surface, what sort of rocks are, are there. And when people are deciding, you know, should we grow a crop there? Uh, is this a good place maybe to uh, uh, establish a, a town? Is, is, the, is the bedrock you know, solid enough to take a motorway or a railway track or an airport, whatever it's going to be? This data is absolutely gold dust and people will pay very good money for that data. That was a monetization. The next uh, item we can uh, look at uh, is called on the syllabus data to impact. So we have uh, the data, we've seen all the different ways in which data can be monetized, uh, but none of that is going to happen unless really somebody takes note of it. Uh, unless the, the data and the way it is analyzed turns into action, and it's really action is what we mean by impact. This is where and only now uh, that the data will change the profitability of the company. And here, CMSEs and management accountants are extremely uh, important. It says if we're talking about improving the financial performance of a business, it is a finance department uh, uh, which is at the heart of really measuring and understanding financial performance. Uh, and therefore, uh, accountants will have a key role in kind of linking other areas uh, uh, to improve performance. And the suggestion is that uh, management accountants must have links with the IT department. It could be the IT department, which is the department which initially records data. Uh, so it could be important, accountants could feel it's important, uh, that we record the time of day in which sales were made because there may be some pattern which is worth trying to, to work out, uh, uh, some cyclical nature about purchases. Data scientists are the people who take the data which is being collected and then analyze it. They, they, these are the ones who in a way uh, look after the data analytics and the, uh, the uh, data mining process which takes place after the data warehouse has been established. And then there are other departmental managers. Uh, we have to explain uh, to departmental managers what the meaning of the analysis that the data scientists uh, have come up with, what this analysis actually means for them. So management accountants can be closely involved in determining what data should be collected, uh, what sort of analysis maybe should be done on that data to gain insights, and then communicating those insights to other non-financial managers within the organization. In terms of a diagram, uh, it can be uh, regarded as this. We have the business, we have the management accountant kind of sitting at the heart uh, of, of this process. Then we have the data scientist. So all the diagram is saying is that over here uh, we need or realize is a need for performance improvement. And again, this could be the management accountant who sees that uh, growth is not going as expected, uh, looks at the KPIs and sees that actual performance is uh, falling short of what the target KPIs are. So what we uh, have is over here the data uh, uh, scientist. Uh, we have the management accountant uh, here who wants to, in a way, question the logic of the data scientist, which is saying, you know, maybe why are you collecting that information? 
shouldn't you be collecting some other information? Shouldn't you maybe be processing it in a, a different way? The management accountants will help the data scientists to produce the analytical uh, findings. Uh, and then these come back uh, here. So the management accountant uh, will look at the analyses which are being produced, will validate it, will have some say as to whether or not we think this data is correct or whether it seems you know, too, too, too outrageous to be correct and maybe there's some error in it uh, and the like. So we ask the questions, we say, this is what we would like you to discover, like you to collect with data, uh, and we help these uh, data scientists to analyze the data in a way that's going to be useful. So having looked at this data that comes back from uh, the IT, then the management accountant can look for commercial insight. So we might simply be seeing the gross profit of a particular product is falling. That might be the very simple analytical finding that comes out of sales data. So then it's up maybe to the management accountant uh, to try and determine why the gross profit of that data is falling. Of course, the management accountant may have to talk to salespeople, may have to talk to marketing people, uh, and, and, and so on. But if the gross profit falls, it is a concern uh, that should be addressed by management accountants. It used to be maybe 20 years ago, management accountants would produce the figures. Gross profit has fallen from 20% to 17%, uh, and then it'd be kind of hands off. Now the role of management accountants has changed somewhat, and management accountants will get much more involved with trying to solve the, the problems of uh, unexpected changes uh, or uh, performance, which is a bit below par. Once we have uh, determined or think we've determined, I would have to check our hypotheses and so on with people and so on. What we would try and do is to influence people. It could be that we think that the gross profit percentage has fallen uh, maybe because we think the, the costs are too high. Maybe the analysis of gross profit percentage fall has shown that the selling price stays the same, but for some reason the cost has gone up. So maybe what we can do is suggest to people or ask people, is there any way in which the cost could be brought down a little bit? Could we maybe simplify the product slightly? Could we make it in larger batches, which is slightly more efficient? So we bring the gross profit back to the KPI, the budget of forecast, which we would ideally like it to be. And that's where you get the impact. Where the data has been collected, the data has been analyzed, the data has been interpreted, uh, the influence has, or suggestions have been taken up, so we have real influence. And that is where the impact is really felt on the bottom line.